I would like to talk to you on best practices, very concrete, what is good early childhood education and how can we improve practice. And um, I will talk on the quality criteria catalog which indicates best practice in various areas and how it can be used to improve the quality in specific centers. Let me start in this way. When we are talking on quality, we need the concept of quality. What does it mean, quality in early childhood education? What does it mean, quality in a specific center? And we are using the following conceptual framework. We think there are four major quality areas. Let's start on the left side at the top. Quality of orientations. What does it mean? In the center, we need an understanding of the child. What do, you, what do we mean when a child is learning? What is the conception of a child? For instance, today, we, are, we think a child cooperates from the very beginning. It inter, the child interacts with teachers, with other adults. The child is an individual which is active from its very beginning. This idea of a child was not ever there. We have a saying in the city of Nuremberg, which is um, a, a city in, in Germany, it's a joke actually, but 700 years ago they had made an invention. So education was considered following the, uh, the following model. There is a big trichter. Um, what is trichter? In, in, it's, it's a mean you fill in. The, the child has an empty head. Nothing is in. Even not straw. Nothing is in. The very good educator is the person who gives in a lot of information from the very beginning without any pain, with a high speed. So the child is considered from the very beginning as an empty box. Today we are thinking in a different way on children. They are active at the very beginning. And this is what I, what I mean. All our education is conceptualized by orientations. We have, we have psychological understanding. Our developmental psychology is differ, differs from uh, psychology we had 100 years ago or so. Uh, also, a center may have a written conception. What is our conception in a center? How do we want to educate students? Orientations. Then we have below structures. Of course, structures do have an impact on children's development. It, it makes a difference if the teacher-child ratio is 1 to 6 or, it, or if it is 1 to 12. These are frame conditions. They are not set by the professionals. No headmaster, no teacher can change these. They can be changed by governments, group size, teacher-child ratio, also how the education of teachers, of educators is. These are structural frame conditions which are set from outside. Then we have the quality of processes. This is what experiences can a child really make in practice? How is the child treated? What kind of stimulation does a child experience, for instance, in language, in social development, and so on? This is the very concrete education a child experiences. And then we, have, we distinguish a fourth quality area. It is the cooperation between the center and parents, which is important because the child is not an isolated individual, it's a child of a certain family, and we know that the cooperation with the family is most important because, as we know from research, the impact of the family is twice to four times as big uh, as the impact of quality of the center, twice to four times as, as big, at least in Western countries. So, all these four quality areas, they are embedded in a social framework, we call it a social ecological context. It means the area where, where the center is, 
the area where um, the family live, um, is it a rural area or is it a metropolitan area and so on. All these may have an impact on children's outcomes, which are on the right side, in cognitive domain, domain social domain, domain and so on. And also, the way a center is organized has an impact on family life. If a center is open all day, this is a prerequisite for the fact that the mother can be uh, gainfully employed, can participate in the labor market. All these quality areas are interlinked to a certain amount, of, uh, to a certain amount and they have an effect on the outcomes. And I would like to start with some of the impacts. On the left side, you find the areas of orientations and structures. You can measure this, for instance, group size, for instance, teacher-child ratio, for instance, space available indoors or space available outdoors. And on the right side, you have the quality of processes. And what we found in several studies, that, that is, that the factors on the left side, the orientations and the structures, do have an impact on the processes. And they explain, these factors explain, between 25 to 50 percent of the process quality. I take it in a different way. That means, these results, if you know the quality of structures, if you know the quality of orientations, you can predict the quality of processes to a certain extent between 25 to 50 percent. Keep this figure in mind, because this is, has an implication for quality improvement. Basically, basically, we have two ways how to improve quality. One is the indirect way, improve the, improve the structures and the orientations. For instance, government should be able to improve teacher-child ratios. It is very costly and therefore governments are hesitating, but it is a way. If we improve the structures, that will have the consequences on the improvement of processes. But how can I do this backwards? Let's consider the last figure. Yeah? That? Here. If we improve the structures, more or less automatically we, we will improve processes. It is very clear. If, if the teacher-child ratio is 1 to 6 instead of 1 to 12, you have a much better frame conditions for interactions between teachers and children, no doubt. But what this figure also indicates, the second half, there, the circle is empty in the second half, there are other at least 50% of quality which are not dependent on the structures. They are, so to speak, homemade. We all have the experience that the two teachers in the same centers, working with two classes, do different quality work. And this is now the aspect where we can start with quality improvement in the centers. There is some responsibility by the professionals to ensure a high level of quality. Therefore, we have these two ways, improved structures, it's the job of administration and government, but in, in addition, improve in a direct way quality in the centers. And I would like to talk on the second way. We shouldn't forget the other way. All of us, and also parents, we have to fight 
for the improvement of structures. We shouldn't forget it, but we also should look for the processes. What do we need to improve quality? First of all, we need a common understanding. What is good practice? What is quality in the center? And um, especially in Germany, where we have different sponsor agencies, like the churches, like welfare organizations, and so on. Each of them, they have a different conception of quality, at least they say it in that way. And no one will allow us to, to set national standards. And for instance, when we made an attempt to assess, and to, uh, to assess national standards, and we published that in a book here, in the Quality Criteria Catalog, people said, you are not allowed to set standards. It's our business. It's me, the sponsor agency, or the, let's say, the Ministry of Cultural Affairs. And we said, relax. Tell me why a child has different needs, a child living, for instance, in Moscow, compared to a child living in Ashrangelsk. And if you make clear to me that there are different needs, then we will have regionalized quality criteria catalog. But if you can't explain that to us, we will have the idea there should be a common frame, what is needed for children, how they th should thrive. So, and we developed this criteria catalog, a common understanding on higher standards. Second, you need semi-standardized techniques. How can we improve quality? We have a lot of further education in Germany, but we do not have much experiences. There, there's an organization here, an organization there, they do quality improvement in service training and so on. But we have very little research if this is really effective. Therefore, we are saying we need a semi-standardized procedure how to develop quality. And a third one is um, we have the experience. Uh, our colleagues in, in practice, they do not learn just from books. They need, they need real life support. We need an organization of quality improvement which includes the whole team, not only one teacher or two teachers. Quality will be effective only when the whole system of a team in the center is addressed. And each in the center has to work on, on the common goal. So we developed a course to develop quality. And what is also needed, but not on the table here, you need time to improve quality. Think of a center as a system. And you have to move the whole system, including the whole team. This is really a hard job, because all of us, we have our practice, we have our attitudes, and what you want to do by quality improvement is to move the whole system. And this is to do so, you need time. Everybody who says to you, we are doing a quality improvement weekend, and then we have a new center. Don't believe. You need time, and according to our experience, you need the time of one year to one and a half years. And as I said, a final condition is, you need to include the whole team, because you are working together. This is not independent work. It's a team who works together, you are working in an organization, and this is really what we have to address to move the whole organization. Now, this quality criteria catalog, by the way, it has been translated into Spanish, and it is widely used in Latin America, and presently we are working with a publisher in Beijing, in China, to, to produce a Chinese version of it. This is a, beside the quality criteria, we developed a further book with all the methods. How can you, how can you 
uh, change quality in your center. So you, uh, it's, an, it's a collection of different methods, very concrete how you, con how you can work in practice. Now a word how the quality criteria catalog is made of. It's too little maybe to read and unfortunately it's in German. But we identified uh, some 20 quality areas on the basis for instance, space. How should a space organize that it is stimulating for kids? Another quality area is what should the daily routine be like? You need that the child can have movement, you need that the child have a chance to develop fine motor uh, possibilities. And of course, all the different areas of development are pictured here and it ends up with the quality of the director. To be a good director, you need certain, um, uh, certain abilities and you have, to, you have to be perfect in organizing things, you have to stimulate um, uh, the colleagues and so on. So, the quality criteria catalog consists of these 21 quality areas and in each area we have some 20 very concrete quality criteria. We are saying what is good practice. And this is not to unify the system, but we give the, we give the criteria and we are hoping that people are reflecting the criteria. You do not need to agree to the criteria, but the criteria sets a standard and you are encouraged to say, I do it in a different way. And then you have to do it, and then you have to uh, have good reasons to do it differently. How did we develop it? We looked for international research and international books um, where quality criteria are implicit. We looked for instruments in assessing quality criteria, and it was um, a step. Many, we had different panels who were cooperating with us to develop the criteria, which has altogether some 400. And it's not that we are saying you should observe and you should deal with all these criteria simultaneously. You can pick up, let's say, language development. You are focusing on this and, um, um, and you work in a team, let's say, for three months on language development. Okay, how is it done in practice? We, we are using a so-called quality circle. We are starting with an analysis of the situation and that means each colleague receives some checklists and, um, and judges the quality in the center according to his or her perspective. Then the different perspectives in the center are brought together. You see, the team as a whole is incorporated. And then you find the profile of the center. Where do we stay? Where do we have strengths? Where do we have weaknesses? And then you agree, that's a topic um, three then, you are looking for a pedagogical orientation. Is it the way we are doing, is this a, a normal way we want to maintain or do we want to make a change? What is said in the literature? Um, what kind of new orientation can we use for our center? Then, step four, you set goals. You will reach, you set goals for improvement. You as the unit, um, as a team are setting these goals. You agree on objectives, you are planning the change, and finally someone is controlling the effect. We are we successful in making our change. And if you are not successful, you start the circle again. And um, this is what we have learned in practice. It is really important that the team reach a certain technology to make improvements. And this is what we are doing with the circle. Um, what can I do that it moves?
No. Next. Next, please. Yeah. So we are working in circles. That means we are putting together. We are putting together the directors of 12 to 15 centers. We are meeting with them for a full day every six to eight weeks. And this holds on during a year and or half a, one and a half years. And in the time between the six weeks, when we are meeting with the directors, the director works with the team. The whole team is incorporated and the whole team participates in the quality improvement. And of course, we are interested in the effects of quality. Does our quality improvement system, does it have an effect? Do we gain a higher standard in quality? And therefore, not always, but I would say every, every second uh, every second circle we are doing, we do an evaluation, a simple one. We are measuring the quality of the center before we start with the circle. And then we are measuring the quality after one and a half years after the circle of quality improvement has been completed. And we are using instruments you are also using here uh, uh, instruments from the Environment Rating Scale, the ACAS Early Childhood Environment Rating Scale. So it's an independent instrument. And what we find is this. The yellow bar is the quality level before our training. The blue bar is the quality level after having finished the training. And you see, more or less, it is one point on a seven-point scale, one point of improvement. Now the question is, is it much or is it just little? And of course, we have measures in the social sciences we call, uh, we are talking on effect sizes. And according to these measures, uh, is an effect and an improvement of one point, a high improvement. So we can demonstrate that at the very end it was worth to do the thing, to do the improvement. We have reached a very, we have reached a higher level. So thank you for your attention. And um, just a final one. Okay, just a final, just the final slide here. Um, the uh, table below, you see quality areas as they are defined in the acres, and you see we have improvements in all quality areas, but especially, um, especially we have improvements in the interactions um, and in the activities. So that means in these fields, which are really dependent on the quality of the teaching and the quality of the educators. And here, the centers have the biggest progress. Thank you once again. Thank you very much, Dancer.